It is my pleasure to welcome to the stage uh, from Nextleaf, Paul Pedersen, the CEO of Nextleaf. Please give him a round of applause. Thanks, Pat. All right, everybody. Thanks uh, very much for your time. I know it's uh, getting to be the afternoon here, getting to be a long day. Uh, very excited to tell you about our company. I started about two and a half years ago, Next Leaf Solutions. Our, our claim to fame is we've been able to beat every billion dollar company to the first issued patent around extraction and purification of cannabinoids. And we went public on, on the Canadian Securities Exchange back in March and uh, are, are scaling up for what we call legalization 2.0 and that's when edibles, oils and uh, derivative products become legal in Canada this October. Could we get the uh, slide deck on here? There we go, excellent. So we trade in Canada as oils and uh, down in the United States here is oil FF. So really uh, our focus since day one has, has been to take a little bit of a unique approach. I, I think what we've seen and, and what you hear a lot is you hear the word vertical integration and that is companies that want to do it all. They want to grow, they want to process, they want to package, brand, retail, do it all. And uh, we believe that great companies are built by uh, folks that focus and, and focus on one thing and do that one thing better than anybody else. And ultimately create value for their, for their customers. And so our focus has been on a narrow segment of the market and that is extraction and, and focusing on uh, developing proprietary technology around the most efficient uh, system that allows for true scalability and allows us to then manufacture products for our downstream B2B customers. So for us, we're not developing brands, we're not um, focusing on taking our brands to market, we're focusing on being a manufacturing partner in Canada uh, for companies that want to operate in a federally legal jurisdiction and want to have a manufacturing partner that is able to uh, able to produce their products at scale. So, to, so we own a portfolio of issued and pending patents around extraction, purification, and the uh, derivative manufacturing of cannabinoids. How we, how we uh, commercialize our, our patented technology is through white label production as well as toll processing. So. Uh, Again, as I mentioned, intellectual property has really uh, been our focus uh, for the last two and a half years. We've been an R&D based business, obviously concentrates in oils haven't become legal yet in Canada, those become legal in October. So what we have done is we've, we've focused on solving the, the biggest problem that we see and that's standardization or a lack thereof. Uh, through our patented technology, uh, able to, to get down to the molecular level, THC or CBD, once the, you're able to uh, separate, isolate, and reformulate, then you can manufacture products uh, that, are, that are truly um, standardized for dose. And we think that is very, very important with what's coming next in the industry. So the other big issue is when you look at the edible market, you look at the beverage market, um, I think sort of across the board, these are products that don't taste very good. And that's because the, the presence of chlorophylls, fats, waxes, and all the under, undesirables that are in the herbal form of cannabis, um, through a, a crude extraction process, the, the processor isn't removing those impurities. So through our, our distillation, we're able to remove those, get down to that tasteless, odorless molecule that then is the precursor to uh, food, beverage, vape pens, any of the other products that are manufactured. I think one of the first questions we always get is, well, what makes your process different from what everyone else is doing? And I think uh, the three big ones, uh, process efficiency, we haven't seen anybody else in Canada at least that is able to process as efficiently. Um, two, product purity, so able to get up to 98% pure uh, broad spectrum cannabinoids. Um, uh, obviously, the purity level would be dictated by the types of products that, the, that our customer wants to, wants to uh, sell. Uh, and then third, true scalability. And there's lots of companies that run uh, CO2. We really believe that uh, as this market evolves and gets larger and larger with hemp and, and with uh, marijuana that's grown at scale outdoors and as in large greenhouses, that uh, true scalability uh, matters and, and that is being able to build larger systems as opposed to just buying more uh, additional systems which require more people and, and, and process. So 
this is a little pictorial representation of our patented process. We currently own three issued patents. Two of those are U.S. patents. Uh, one is of our overall process of going from biomass to uh, THC or CBD molecule. We also have another uh, issued patent around some of our filtration, which is, comes post-extraction. We kind of uh, simplify this into a, uh, a three-step process. Uh, the idea is, is crude extraction, that's when you're taking biomass and you, you're putting it through our, uh, our process. We use cryoethanol. Uh, and then the refinement step, filtration, is when you're removing the chlorophylls and the, the waxes. Uh, and then finally, you're, you're getting down to that molecular level uh, through, through distillation. We've got uh, 24 patents pending. Uh, expecting to double our, our patent portfolio here in the next year. I think one uh, advantage that we have operating in Canada is uh, it's a very interesting time right now in the United States and I, I think due to the, uh, the speed to which the US government is legalizing or not legalizing cannabinoids in the United States, it's, it's really giving Canadian companies like Nextleaf a big advantage because there is uh, very little prior art, and that is, uh, you know, previous patent filings around uh, cannabinoids that are that are uh, in the United States, and we really look at uh, intellectual property as a land grab right now. So we're we're focused. Our science team and R and D team is is focused on developing intellectual property that we think will uh, be very impactful as this industry obviously uh, moves into a, a fully legal marketplace. So our our business model here, um, again in Canada, that's our that's our focus as well as the global market. So so producing product in Canada that can then be exported to places like Germany, Australia, Poland. Uh, when I was at my last company, I actually worked on the first legal export of cannabis that was to the German market back four years ago when we did this. People said to us, why are you guys even bothering with Germany? There's, there's 600 people that can legally buy cannabis. Uh, that number is about 40,000 today and, and almost 100% of that market is supplied by Canadian producers and that's really why I think we've seen the flow of capital into Canada is that uh, not only do we not have to worry about state by state but we can we can export products so our business model in Canada we buy biomass from from local farmers uh, now we have outdoor ca cultivation that's just uh, been legal uh, this is the first summer so obviously very excited about that um, then once it's in an oil derivative form, we can either sell it um, to, our, to our partners domestically or internationally under their own brands. We also uh, generate revenue through IP licensing, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, Canada, you, you sell through each province, uh, has a, a government distributor, so the, the producer sells to the government distributor and then the government distributor sells to the, to the private or public retailers in that province. Extract market, I mean, this is a lot of stuff that uh, those of you in the industry already know. What we've seen in Canada is last year, the sale of dried flour only grew 11% year over year, but the, the sale of oils and extracts grew by almost 95%. Medically, we see countries globally legalizing medical cannabis, and, and what we see is predominantly doctors prefer oils and derivative products as opposed to telling their patient, hey, take two hoots off this joint and call me in the morning. Infused products in Canada, have, there's been a lot of focus. Again, as I mentioned, we've had a federal uh, medical legalization back in 2013 uh, for medical cannabis. That was only for herbal form. Um, then uh, we had adult use legalization back in October, but uh, again, still it's, it's uh, herbal form and low concentrate forms of, of oil. So very excited for what's coming next. Some, some quick uh, views of our processing facility. We're 40 minutes east of downtown Vancouver, um, 6,000 square foot facility for us. We can do 100 tons per year biomass into distillate oil. Our business model in our phase one is, is focusing on, on distillation, focusing on distillate. So taking a very narrow view in, in the sense that we wanna produce the precursor that's gonna be used by companies that then uh, take, take that distillate in their facility, manufacture edibles, manufacture beverages. We do vape pens, uh, but really keep our focus narrow. Strategically, we're located within one hour's drive of over nine million square feet of cannabis greenhouse. Uh, growing. So a lot of biomass. There's a, currently 180 tons of, of uh, low, 
low quality pot sitting in vaults across the country in Canada, so there's a lot of supply um, of, of lower quality biomass that can be used for, for extracts. Um, product formulation, and, and again, really fits in well with our strategy, and that is owning and developing intellectual property. Um, our patents are, are really based on how do, we, how do we pull more molecules out of the same amount of biomass? How do we scale this up? How do we uh, allow for the standardization of, of manufacturing? Uh, these, are, these are forms that are all currently illegal in Canada that become legal here in a couple of months. Very exciting for us as a business. And we see ourselves as a connector in the industry. We're not guys that want to do it all. We think that that's a recipe for um, not building a very successful and sustainable business long term. So our, our, our model is really find great like-minded partners. This is one of them, a company called BevCana. They have a, a bottling plant in Canada uh, on a natural aquifer. They can do 40 million bottles a year. This group spent about $30 million building this facility, one of the most advanced bottling plants that I've seen. Um, and uh, we're excited because they're converting their, their plant into producing infused beverages. And uh, so we have a partnership whereby all the THC and CBD molecules that come from, uh, from Nextleaf go into their beverages. We're their exclusive supplier, as well as we have uh, some, some beverage technology that increases um, onset time, but most importantly is allows us to put the, the molecules, THC and CBD, into a water-soluble form through nanoemulsion. The other nice thing about operating in Canada is that we have been able to get a lot of government funding. We received uh, last year the largest uh, R&D grant in Canada for cannabis. That was a two and a half million dollar grant through uh, Sustainable Development Technology Canada. We're also part of a, a grant uh, through the National Research Council. This has allowed us to, to scale at our team and um, develop technology using non-dilutive government funds. Quick little overview of our team. So my background, I was at uh, Peace Naturals. We were the first legal producer in Canada, uh, as well as the CFO, Charles. Uh, so that company was acquired 2016 by Kronos Group. We left to start Nextleaf. Ryan Coe is our chief technology officer. He's been in the cannabis industry for 15 years. When I met him, he was doing things with cannabis, uh, doing uh, molecular distillation. And he, in my view at the time, he was years ahead of all these uh, big cannabis companies. And I think that has really been our focus is, is, is working with guys that have, uh, who are pioneers um, and, and take their technology, scale it up. We've uh, surrounded Ryan with a team. We've got uh, four PhDs on staff, a PhD chemical engineer that we took from oil and gas. And they've really focused on taking what is market validated extraction technology and scaling it up for what we think is coming next in the industry. Uh, Tom Ulanowski, who runs our facility, previously built uh, British Columbia's first legal cannabis producer called Canna Farms. It was a family owned business that sold last summer 130 million bucks. We're lucky enough to get Tom to, to join our team. Some milestones, I'll, I'll skip through this very quickly, but uh, we started two and a half years ago, started by, by acquiring number of formulations and, and technology which we've patented. Uh, our first patent came down about a year ago, uh, had a second US patent recently and expect to get three more. Obviously a big milestone for us was getting public, allowed us to raise 15 million and, and really put the capital behind our business that we need to scale this. We think that um, as we look ahead, we think that we're, uh, we've got the right technology, the right people, and we're at the right point in history, being in the first G20 country to, to legalize cannabis concentrates. And uh, we think that for us, um, we have a big opportunity to develop um, uh, technology and develop intellectual property around extraction, purification, and manufacturing of products in a country that's federally illegal and allows us to then export product and technology to Europe and, and Asia as these countries uh, legalize medical cannabis, which we're seeing now globally. I mentioned we went public in uh, March, so currently uh, I think we have about a $60 million market cap and excited to, uh, to get into uh, commercial production here in October and, and obviously 2020 is a huge year for our, our business and really uh, I think our focus as I mentioned uh, innovation technology intellectual property proud of the fact that we've been able to beat every billion dollar company uh, canopy growth they've got their 80 patents pending and, and 
very proud day for us when we uh, were able to beat those guys to the, to the first uh, three issued patents. And, and uh, for us, we think that as uh, the industry sees investment from big tobacco, big pharma, big alcohol, um, we think intellectual property is how you keep the big guys honest. We're, we're uh, a you know, small company. We've got 14 full-time people. I've got an MBA in finance, uh, Michigan State University. So I love, uh, yeah. love being back in Michigan here and uh, just really appreciate the opportunity to tell you about our store and what we're doing. And uh, I'll be around here all afternoon. And if you guys have any questions, love to uh, chat about it then. All right. Thanks, Paul.